What is the true purpose of money? We've been blessed with this incredible ability to make money, create it, earn it, accumulate it, and then, and then what? Let's talk about the true purpose of money. It's Anita Wingley and welcome to the Creative Studio Sessions. These are the videos where we talk about ideas and insights for living a brave, meaningful and creative life. And today we're talking about the true purpose of money. This is a topic that I love sinking my teeth into because I've always been a truth seeker. I love digging into things and figuring out people's thoughts and tuning in to my own sense of truth and understanding, okay, how can we move forward in the most wise way? For most people on earth, money is a very big deal. Either you want a lot of it, you have a lot of it, which is a big deal, or you need a lot of it in order to survive and live, in which case it's still a really big deal to you. And we've been told particular ways that we're supposed to earn money, what we're supposed to do with it, and then how much of it we're supposed to have. But these are ideas that other people have come up with, and sometimes they're based on concepts of the world that are very competitive and are actually not humane. So think, for example, of how it works in business. Once upon a time, I imagine that there was a generation of people who found out that they could show up at a job, make money, just do whatever people told them to and then they'd be able to get a bunch of money from it. And they were really happy with it. This is my imagination. I don't have proof, but you know, a job is not that bad of a thing. However, somewhere along the line, this idea developed that businesses are evil, that they just want to milk all of our energy and resources and then they give us a tiny paycheck. So this idea of like fighting with our employer for money and then it became this, you know, that's just one idea of money. There's also other ideas like I need to have a lot of it so that I can prove that I am a valuable and worthy human being. These are all these stories about money that we have been filtered and taught through our school, through our parents, through friends, through movies. There's a lot of well-meaning people in the groups I just mentioned, but some people, I'd say most people carry their own wounds around money. So today we are going to dig into the spiritual truth about money. What is the true purpose of money? And I'm going to share with you some, let's just call it what it is, radical thoughts um, and ideas about the true purpose of money. And I really invite you to listen, not just with your ears, but listen with your heart and soul. Because the first time I learned of this stuff, I was like, yes, finally, ping, this is what I have been looking for. On my money and self growth journey, I learned about the law of attraction a couple of years ago. You are probably familiar with it if you're watching this video. It's the idea of like attracts like, and so if you think positive thoughts about money, and remind yourself that you are rich and then you will attract more money and be able to make more money. However, that conception of money and wealth is very tied to accumulating wealth. Like, I want to attract wealth. What happens after you, after you attract wealth? Do you just buy a $5 million house and then attract a $10 million house? For me, that never felt like it was the purpose of my life and that was not the reason that I want to make money. So a couple, actually about a year ago, I found this book at a conference and it just so happened to be the book that was there. I've read lots of other money books, but this is one that has just like, oh, stuck right into me. It's called The Treasure Principle by Randy Alcorn. And it's super quick and easy to read, as you can tell if you want to pick it up, but it has some really simple and like powerful statements about money and the spirituality of money. Before we dig into the true purpose of money, we have to first understand who the money actually belongs to, what it is and why are we given it. And here is the biggest financial truth bomb. I own nothing. It's all God's 
I'm just God's money manager. Let's hear that one more time. I own nothing. It's all God's. I'm just God's money manager. So when I first read this, I was like, oh, bleep. Uh, that is truth. Because even my ability to own money is from God. My ability to make money is from God. My skills, my health, like my passions, um, the things I'm good at, the things I can do, the fact that I can work on a computer and make money or you know, show up at an office and get myself physically to an office to make money, all of these things are gifts from God. I did not make them happen myself. They are gifts that are given to me. And so money is this byproduct of the energy that I put into the world. And so by virtue of the fact that even that energy is not mine, the byproduct is not mine. And I know that the more I've sunk into this truth, that I own nothing, it's all God's, I'm just God's money manager, I have become free. So there's a page in this book where he writes out all the truths, all of the treasure principles, he calls them, and then there's a space for you to sign. And the very first concept is that I transfer all of my assets to heaven. I now give God ownership, or I would say give God back ownership of everything that I own. And I signed it, dated it, and it was about a year ago. And ever since then, I've felt God like tug at my heart. The times when I want to claim that this money is mine and I'm thinking about how I want to use it, I, God seems to bring me back to this book. And he's like, Anita, remember, you gave me all of your money and your assets and your ability to own money and make money. So um, are you going to ask what I think you should do with the money? So. Quick side note about God. When I say God, I recognize that that might not resonate with you and that is nothing to worry about. You can use another word that resonates with you right now, whether it's love, universe, a higher power of your understanding. I've had periods in my life where like, if someone told me the word God, I would have completely shut them off and stopped listening, turned the other way, and that was the end of that. However, as I've grown and journeyed, I've just come to understand God as this loving being that holds all of us and our lives and the entire universe in its heart and in its hands. So I use the word God. If it doesn't resonate, pick another word. So if you have never given all of your assets to God, I encourage you to sign them over to God. It is the most liberating, freeing thing you can ever do. It might sound like total absurdity right now, or maybe you have been waiting for someone to give you permission to give your assets over to God. Honestly, like God is my financial planner, my CEO, he's my career advisor, he's everything. And so when like, just by surrendering it to God, I trust that there's a higher wisdom in the world that knows what's a better, what's a better use for my money than I know, right? Because what do I know? I can only see the life I have lived and maybe a couple years ahead in other people's lives, but there's an intelligence in the universe that knows everyone's lives and knows like the absolute best ways of distributing the money that I have been entrusted. So the first thing to understanding the true purpose of money is to realize that it's not even your money. It belongs to God and it's given to us to steward. So now let's dig into the true purpose of money. Money is ultimately given to us to give. And actually, Randy makes a distinction in this book. He says, we are not given money, we are entrusted with money. Or we, were, we are made stewards of money. I like using these terms because it's just like a mental note. We have heard terms like spending money, making money, earning money, investing money. We've heard those words around money so often that like we've internalized it and we just assume that it's my money, right? Like that term, like how am I spending my money? You know, oh, someone else is paying for a meal, so they're using their money. It's just baked into the way we talk. So in order to understand the true purpose of money, I have just completely changed my language around money. Ultimately, money is entrusted to us to give, but I like to expand the definition of give. I use words like using money, investing money, allocating money, sharing money, distributing money. 
These are terms that most people do not use, but if you manage budgets, you might be familiar with terms like this. It's about developing a practice of sitting down with God or a higher power of your understanding, looking at your money and actually thinking, okay, or actually communicating with this higher intelligence, whether you want to call it your inner wisdom, whatever, you communicate with this higher wisdom and you ask, how am I meant to use this money? How am I meant to distribute this money? How am I meant to allocate this money, to share this money, and to invest this money in things that will benefit other people? So these are questions that I ask about my money. I do a big annual thing and then I also do it monthly so that every month I actually take some time to reflect, have I been spending the money that God has entrusted me with in the right ways? And I'm just going to share some real talk because this isn't a pedestal. This is, this is just a conversation between two soul friends. So. As I've done this, I've noticed that I haven't been distributing the money as well as I'm meant to. And just a heads up, as you discover this true purpose of money and you walk through this practice, you're not gonna get it right right out of the gate. It's a lifelong practice, which is why we have a whole life to live. So once I discovered these principles and I've been living them out, um, I started to realize that I was accumulating more money than I felt like I should. Now, this goes against normal, like personal finance advice. Some of it relates because it's not like I spend every cent, but, um, but I could just feel that God was like, Anita, you are accumulating more of this and you're not letting it flow out into the world the way you're meant to. Now, God doesn't look at us and then like try to smack us on the head with thunderbolts. God is more like this loving presence that, that, that would be like a father looking over your shoulder and being like, hey, I know you can do better because you are a part of my family and we got skills here. So that's what God is like to me. So I started to realize, okay, I actually need to deliberately like distribute this money the way that God, that I feel like I'm meant to. So I have buckets and categories in my life that I know I want to invest in. Some of it, I felt God telling me to invest in myself and taking care of myself. Now this is, for me, this is important because I grew up in a family where like, we don't really spend money on, on taking care of ourselves. Um, we're a bit different now because everyone in my family is older, but when we were kids, I always felt like we were quite frugal. And um, it wasn't until much later in life, like right now, that I'm starting to realize that, oh, if I want to thrive and have physical health and have like my mind facing the right way so that I can think through big problems, like I need to take care of myself. So some of the money goes to taking care of myself, it goes to taking care of my loved ones, it goes to taking care of the world and investing in things and, and projects, whether they are projects that I instigate or projects that other in, others instigate. And there's also like money is meant to be used to take care of the people that I work with. Um, so charitable giving has been this area that I've been compelled to use my money. So as you go through this practice of digging into the true purpose of the money that you have been given, you will feel your life expand because you will come to see that your money is not just for you to use, it's for a higher purpose. I've always been a big believer that like if you have a feeling deep in your soul that you are meant to, to wield, to hold, to channel large amounts of money into and through the world, like millions, God is not going to give you slash entrust those millions of dollars to you until you learn how to, how to use the money that you have been given. So if you've got an extra $10,000 sitting in the bank account and, and right now your plan is to buy a yacht with it, what's going to happen when there's $100,000 in your bank account? Is that when you're going to start giving to charity or are you going to start now? Now, if God tells you to spend the $10,000 on a yacht and like, then that, I am not here to tell you what God wants you to do with your money. But what I am inviting you to do is really actually tune into that higher wisdom. Because if you make financial decisions without that higher wisdom, 
that's when we regret. That's when something in our conscious afterwards is like, nah girl, that was not how you were supposed to use the money. You were supposed to use it for something deeper, something more meaningful. Not that a yacht is more meaningful, but you catch my drift. It's, it's about really tuning into the purpose of the money that you have been given. So now you understand that the true ultimate purpose of money is to give. And we can use words like use, spend, allocate, distribute, invest, share. I encourage you actually not to use the word spend money because it doesn't have the right tone to me. Use the word like allocate money. You're just sharing the money that you have been given because it's supposed to flow through you. You can even think of money like love. When you have been loved a lot, don't you just want to share that love with other people? When you see how like blessed you are in life, don't you just want to bless other people? If you know, it might take some healing before you're actually ready to share love or to share your blessings. But once you are healed, you will understand that like, of course, and it's kind of like that with money. When you first start out, especially if you grew up in a family without very much money, um, when you first get money, you might have what's called an orphan spirit. Like you just want to hoard everything because deep inside you still feel like an orphan. I definitely had this and I'm definitely healing my orphan spirit as well. So the orphan spirit just wants to like hoard all of this money because it feels like it's never going to have enough. It needs to fend for itself. That's how you know you have an orphan spirit when it's like, I always have to fend for myself. Um, orphans seek independence because that's how they can protect themselves. But you've got to heal through that. That is the life journey, healing yourself and becoming the person that you're meant to be. And then once you are healed and you recognize your identity as a child of God, someone that's loved and taken care of by this higher power, you know, because there are spiritual forces at work in our world, then you understand, like from that point on, you get to live like an heir, a child of God, a daughter of the King of Kings. And you know, as an, as an heir of this grand inheritance, your job is to share it. Imagine what it's like to be Meghan Markle, to just to be like wrapped into this family and suddenly you have all this incredible power and wealth and your job is to share it. It's to bless people. So that, is the true purpose of money. Once you are healed inside, you have this freedom to share and, and to give that blessing into the world. So I encourage you to pick up this book, The Treasure Principle by Randy Alcorn. He's actually written tons of books about money. Um, he has this incredible story where he was making like good money and royalties from his books and then his ministry got slapped with a lawsuit to the point where he couldn't make more than a certain amount of money. So he was literally stuck making less money. And it was right after he'd written a book called Money, Possessions and Eternity. So he knew it was a God thing. So I just love that story because it just proves that like God is watching how we spend our money. And when we don't spend our money wisely or in the way that we're meant to, God, the universe is kind of like, Ahem! and maybe it sends you a video like this or it sends us books. Um, or it just does something to shake up our world. You know, maybe like a financial crisis happens. It just, something happens so that we are forced to look at our money differently. So rather than waiting until that day when all hell breaks loose, start looking at your money now. It's honestly like the idea of giving money and like the purpose of the money that I have been entrusted with is to give it. I love that because it sets me free. It means that I can give. It means that sometimes when I'm challenged and I'm like, you know, I plan on giving, giving $20 to something and God is like, no, give all of your cash, whatever it is, 80 or hundred. Like those are the moments when I'm like, ah, really? And the more <laughs> exhale when those things happen. The more that I am in tune with God, the more I sense God be like, whose money is it anyway? And that's when I'm like, okay. So it's kind of like building spiritual muscles around money so that when you are asked to give, asked by God to give, you, are, you can give freely. So that when you are given that $10 million, God is like, cool, I know she's gonna give it away and not just hoard it because she's been giving for 10, 20, 30 years. And that, my friends, is freedom. Financial freedom and financial abundance is not about how much money you have, 
It's about how you feel about the money you have, what you do with it, and the deeper understanding that it's not even your money. It's God's money and you're so blessed that you get to share it. And that is it for this video, the true purpose of money. Thank you for watching, for being here with me, for being brave enough to dig into the purpose of money. This is going to be the greatest adventure of your life. If you want to join me on my creative adventures, you can find me over on Instagram at Anita Wingley or read more on the blog, anitawingley.com. Thank you for being here and I will see you in the next video.